Hi, my name is Shatira Giles and I am currently studying carpentry here at ATC. On today's episode of the Student Takeover Edition, we will be talking to Mr. Arthur Mickleberry from the carpentry department. Hi, Mr. Mickleberry. Hello. How are you, Ms. Giles? I'm well, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. As a student, to know you, we all know that you are a Morehouse man. Yes. Tell me a little about that. Um, Morehouse by way of Booker T. Washington. Okay. I'm an Atlanta native, born and raised, the uh, third generation, I think, in Atlanta. Um, and I was basically raised in the AU Center. My dad went to Morehouse. My mom went to Spelman. Um, oh, and incidentally, my grandmother graduated from Morehouse. Okay. Eight women have graduated from Morehouse. Uh, so I had, I, had, I had heritage there. She graduated in 1927. Wow. I've got the diplomas. So I have three. My diploma, my dad's diploma, my grandmother's diploma. That's so, um, yeah, I've got a lot of tradition there. In addition to the fact that my mom taught at Spelman. So I grew up in the AU Center. Um, I could not imagine going to school anywhere else. What was your major at Morehouse? I had a dual major, uh, English Lit and African American Studies. Okay. So, so with that, what made you become a carpenter? My dad was a contractor. And um, as a very young person, he had me working with him. And I saw what the profession could do economically. And I was looking at what the profession could do as a uh, teacher in the Atlanta public school system. And I just gyrated toward my dad's profession. So most of your carpentry lessons came from your father. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Amazing. Um, so I was, I was raised in the trades and working with my dad, I worked around all the other trades, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, uh, masonry, the whole nine. And as a young man, very young man, I didn't like it very much, but the older I got, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it because we would go on job sites where there was nothing but dirt. A couple of months later, you got a structure sitting there waiting for somebody to move in or fire damage, storm damage, uh, just dilapidated properties. We go in, people are ready to bulldoze. We don't bulldoze. We bring them back to life and people live there. So it was, it's, 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 it's very rewarding. And for you to say that you, you love it, I haven't met many carpenters or construction workers that did not like their job. Right. So that means a lot. In the field, what particularly were were challenges or adversities that you had to overcome? Um, one in particular, it was, it was, it was massive. Uh, it was a structure over in Midtown and it was an older home. And we went in and uh, got the building permits to go to work. It involved a lot of uh, demolition before we could start reconstruction. Well, the place was um, just laden with asbestos. The building, struck, build, the building uh, department came out, shut the job down, uh, and we had to do asbestos abatement. Well, of course, that was not part of the contract. So we had to go back to, the, the owners they had to go back and restructure the loan to uh, pay for the abatement. In the meantime, this was during an inflationary period, building materials started going sky high. So now my contract is no more good because I did not allow for all this inflationary um, purchase of building materials. And it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Um, and a couple of times I wanted to just walk away from the job, but I had a commitment to the owners and we stuck it out and we got it done. The lessons learned. Lessons learned. Oh, lessons. What advice would you give students entering this trade? Um, it's nothing to play with. It's very, very difficult if you physically, if you choose to be entrepreneurial, it's very, very difficult mentally. Um, you walk into a lot of situations where you really don't have a clue. 
and you have to go in there and make it work. Particularly with um, renovations, you can't see behind the walls. You can't know the nature of wiring. You can't know the nature of plumbing pipes. You have to anticipate. And um, sometimes you anticipate right, sometimes you anticipate wrong. If you anticipate too high, you lose the job. If you anticipate too low, then you can't make a profit. I definitely, I see it now. Cause you made me jump out there and start getting my feet wet a little bit. So I thank you for that. What two advice would you give someone to be successful in this field? Number one, master this field. Master it as much as you can. Let me take that back. I don't know if any, I don't know if anybody actually masters, but going into this, not prepared mentally, um, financially, you can lose. You can lose tremendously. You have to anticipate what is not there, which brings me to a philosophy of mine. And that is, there is a tremendous difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge you can get out of the book. Wisdom you can only get by living. And if you live through enough of these projects, you increase your wisdom, and sometimes the wisdom is in conflict with the knowledge. Uh, so you have to, you have to, you have to kind of use adapt. both. Yes, you have to adapt and use both. Um, and experience is the wisdom. The living is the wisdom. Things that look good on paper don't always look good in real life. So you have to decipher between the two. What are the two qualities that you believe are important to reach your goals? Number one, you have to have the proper financial access to the financials. You don't have to have a whole lot of money, but you do have to have some borrowing power. Um, most jobs that you go into, now some jobs will provide what they call motiv motivational um, uh, funds. A lot of people call it front money. But, but the proper term for it is motivational funds to get you started. Some projects do not allow that, particularly government funded product, pro projects. So you got to have a little borrowing power. Um, you got to have some financial institutions, either that or individuals that are, ready, that are, that are willing to finance uh, this particular project. Generally, after you make the first draw on the job, you should be capable of continuing through to, to, to completion. Because I don't know, you, you can have several different draws on the job, uh, depending on how you structure your contract. Um, but generally with most people, getting started is the problem. The problem. As we come to the end of another episode, what are the two qualities? Okay. Um, if you could leave us with some advice, what would it be? Grow a thick skin. Uh, grow a very, very thick skin. Uh, be meticulous with your estimates. I know a lot of contractors that have lost tremendously because they did not know how to properly estimate a job. Um, I have had people that will refuse to make progress payments unless I committed to do something over and above the contract. So you got to have a thick skin. Um, and jobs, just like in life, uh, very seldom go according to plan. So you have to be able to, you have to be very, very flexible because when, when, you, hit a, when you hit a brick wall, you, you've got to either go around it, go over it, go under it. You can't go through it. So, so, so you have to be mentally strong enough. You have to be financially strong enough to weather the storm. The other thing, speaking of storms, weather, weather can wear you out. It can kill you. You get in the middle of a project and it rains for three days. That's a problem. Oh, and if you're not properly dried in, then that makes it rain inside your project. So it's uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, it can get pretty tough out there. 
As we come to an end of another episode, we want to thank you for tuning in and spending your valuable time with us for the Student Takeover Edition. We hope that you found this episode informative, thought-provoking, and entertaining. If you enjoyed what you heard, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you can be notified about future episodes. And if you have any feedback or suggestions for topics you would like us to cover, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We love hearing from our listeners and are always looking for ways to improve and grow. Until next time, continue to stay strong so that you can finish strong. Thank <laughs> you.